What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to take a look at a pretty sad, psychologically disturbing piece of work. This is a manga that has been out of print for quite a long time, but it is back. It is called No Longer Human, the complete edition. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Think about liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this kind of content. We have No Longer Human collecting the complete three volume series by Az Uz Uz Uzamaru Furua, based on the original novel by Azuma Daisa. I promise not to butcher any more Japanese names going forward, hopefully. This piece of work was also adapted by another manga artist named Junji Ito which I did enjoy more than this version, but this is still really, really good. So straight up, this is a story about depression, substance abuse, and suicide, which follows our main character's descent into madness. Now, it's not pretty, but it is enjoyable on many different levels, from the progression of the storytelling, the artwork, and the overall ideas and feelings that our main character portrays. Now, his name is Yozo Oba, and it pretty much follows his life from age 17 to 25, his struggle for survival with alcohol, drug addiction, and depression, until it finally takes a toll on him to the point of being no longer human, hence the title. The storytelling is interesting because it is being told um, mainly through the use of narration from our main character through like an old diary that he wrote. Now, the main character's actions and inner thoughts are described in vivid detail. It's a bit of a bummer, but this is life and I couldn't help myself relating somewhat to these feelings of society and the human race. So that being said, Yozo is a rich kid struggling to find himself in the world doesn't really know which way to turn. He can't relate to people. He tries to be the class clown, which is kind of the only way he can relate to them. He visits prostitutes, starts drinking. Um, he wants to be a writer in some sense, although he is uncertain, but his addictions and mental health are always in conflict with him. He's not an unpopular, isolated person. He's rather social, you know, girls like him but he feels like he's being fake and hiding behind a mask pretty much. And that's where I found it hard to identify with him because externally, he has a lot of good things going on for him. But that's not how addiction and depression always works. And he does have some past traumas contributing to his outlook. Now the art style is pretty generic, I wanna say, but there are some really nice detailed pages and double page spreads here that really stand out and make this book really what it is. Some of the images set the tone for the dark moods this character is experiencing, and it really resonated with me. So this is a manga that has been out of print for a while, and prices for the individual volumes were incredibly high. So if not for this reprint, I'm not sure I would have read it. It is also read from left to right, compared to the regular manga style, which starts from the back of the book, I assume the reason for this was to, of course, appeal to the North American consumer. So that's all I want to say. I don't want to spoil any other details about the main characters or what happens. Check it out if you're interested. Keep in mind, you know, what you're getting into here. Not the happiest of stories, but still a really good one. And like I said, I really did enjoy the Junji Ito adaptation of this story as well. Um, so you definitely want to check that one out. That one has more of a horror vibe to it, though. So until next time, guys, take care. Mm -hmm.